Hello and welcome to the Sunflower FM. You're here with your favorite EG, Sarah, for this evening session. Today, we're going to discuss about some interesting topic that happened at Pakistan. Before we start our segment, I would like to introduce the person who accompanied me this evening. Ms. Ari, the consultant of economic research in Pakistan, Ms. Patin, the analyst social sciences. On the other hand, we also invited the Ms. Minister of Education, Ms. Aisha, and Mr. Roland as political analyst. Before we start our discussion further, I'm going to share to you guys a little bit about the monetization theory. As you guys know, if we talk about the monetization, we will talk about the technology, the globalization era, and yes, you're right about that. The monetization came out from the German sociologist Max Weber. Monetization refers to a model of a progressive transition from a very modern or traditional to a modern society. This monetization theory suggests that traditional societies will develop as they adopt more modern practices. Proponents of modernization theory claim that modern states are wealthier and more powerful and that their citizens are freer to enjoy a higher standard of living. So based on this monetization theory, the country that related with this issue is Pakistan. This country, if I might say, quite interesting and have a lot of issues that we will discover more. So I don't want to waste our time. Ms. Aisha, as the Minister of Education, can you tell us about the education system at Pakistan? I mean, how this country managed this education system towards its people? Thank you for inviting me this evening to answer a question about education in Pakistan. Let me explain a little bit about the education system practice in Pakistan. The education, the education system in Pakistan is generally divided into six levels. First, preschool, which is the age for the age from three to five years. Second, primary, which is grade one through five. Third, middle for grade six through eight. Fourth, high, which is grade nine and 10, leading to the secondary school certificate, or we call it SSC. Fifth, intermediate for grade 11 and 12, leading to the higher secondary school certificate, or HSSC. And last, university program leading, leading to undergraduate and graduate degrees. The school education is intended for children aged three to five years old and typically consists of three stages, which is a play group, nursery, and kindergarten. After preschool, pupils attend junior school from grade one to five, follow middle school from grade six to eight. In Pakistan, secondary education begins in grade nine and last four years. Students must pass a national examination offered by a regional board of intermediate and secondary education at the end of each school year. Okay, that's cool, Ms. Aisha. Thank you for sharing this information to us. If we will talk about this education system, we can run from the problems or disadvantage while handling this issue. So, Ms. Patin, would you like to tell or share at us about the issue of this education system in Pakistan? Thank you for the interesting question, Sarah. Education is regarded as the cheapest form of the national defense. The, depra the deprable state of education in Pakistan, however, is ample evidence of an inability to defend its own sector. Despite the passage of 62 years and the introduction of 22 policies and action plans, the educational, the educational sector still await the advent, advent of the rescuer. The economic the economic situation in Pakistan is currently shaky and education in the sector most badly affected. According to the, according to the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, the state of Pakistan shall eliminate illiteracy, illiteration and provide free and mandatory secondary education within the shortest possible time. In the Human Development Report, Pakistan is ranked 160 36 since its population is just 49.9% educated. The primary completion rate in Pakistan, as reported by the UNESCO Data Center, is 33.8 for females and 47.18% and for males, indicating that individuals in the sixth largest country in the world are unable to obtain a basic education. Among the education problem that Pakistan face, a uh, Pakistan education system is founded on unequal line, a gender discrimination ratio, lack of technical education, and in and and inexperienced teacher and poverty. Oh, okay. Thank you, Ms. Martin, to share the information to us. Besides about the education issue at Pakistan, I also heard about the energy crisis that happened at there. 
Miss Arifa, as the Kuasa of Academic Research in Pakistan, can you spill the tea to us about this energy crisis issue? All right, thank you, Sarah. As we talk about development issue, Pakistan energy infrastructure is not well developed. Rather, it is considered to be undeveloped and poorly managed. Currently, the country is facing se severe energy crisis. Despite of strong economic growth and rising energy demand during past decade, no serious effort has been made to install new capacity of generation. Moreover, rapid demand growth, transmission loss due to outdated infrastructure, power thief, and seasonal reduction in the av availability of hydropower have worsened the situation. Consequently, the demand exceeds supply and hence load shading is a common phenomenon through power shutdown. For you, the methods of balancing Pakistan supply against the demand for electricity has remained a large unsolved matter. Pakistan faced a significant challenge in revamping its network responsibility for the supply of electricity. As we can see in Karachi, Pakistan is really under a worse energy crisis as the power shock fall reached 7,468 megawatts, resulting in up to 10 to 18 hours of load shedding nationwide. Currently, the total power generation stands at 18,031 megawatt, while the demand, however, around 25,500 megawatt. Shortage of fuel and techn technical reason for shortfall in electricity generation are being called the main reason for the shutdown of power plants. Pakistan also has had wider potential to tap power, though, due to the lack of each integrated or proactive arranging, extremely less number of manipulation producing plan were installed to encounter innovation demands. Resultantly, above the year, the gap amid power demand and supply drastically produced and now just opposing demand of 20,000 megawatts, we are possessing concerning 11,500 megawatts only. And you know, over the year, there is a large demand of power because increase in the population, enhancement in the lifestyle, industrial and agricultural growth, and the greater transformation needs. Therefore, government was making effort to fix the problem of load shedding. Okay. I don't know this issue actually kind of interesting for us to know. Thank you, Ms. Arfa, for this useful information. We're going to move for the last person, the political analyst, Mr. Rowling. Can you give your opinion about the merits and demerits about this issue? Okay, um, thank you, uh, Ms. Sarah. So uh, there are a lot of uh, merits and demerits, and I class it with, uh, with two classes, which is uh, education and uh, energy res uh, resources. For education, the merits are in the framework of organizational structure, goals, curriculum, procedures, and pedagogy. Institutionalized education is becoming increasingly diverse, making it necessary for higher education instructors to generate postmodern tactics in teaching approaches aimed at preparing students for a new age. In order for education to be sustainable, educators must continue to use modernistic ways to educating adults, but educators must also provide people with the skill they need to succeed in the expand, expanding the global world. However, the demerits are uh, the students tend to receive a lot of information instead of understanding it. It can cause them to left behind because they didn't reapply the education that they learned for their developed uh, purpose. Uh, next is the energy resource, which is Pakistan is endowed with uh, potential renewable uh, en energy resources such as solar, wind, hydro, and biomass. This resource have the capacity to be major contributor to future energy production metrics. The country future energy should, be, should come from the balanced mixture of all these resources to steadily decrease its reliance on imported oil. Even though modernize, modernization create uh, technology equipment in Pakistan, they are still aging of the 
generating uh, equipment which could not develop the electricity as per the design requirement. Besides, Pakistan also have low water level in them, which is the source hydroelectric power. And recently, 12 units from the Terbala Dam closed due to low water level. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roland, for sharing this information to us. Now, we are already at the end of the time for this segment. Thank you to Ms. Arifa, Ms. Atin, Ms. Aisha, and Mr. Roland for coming to this radio show. I hope we can do this segment together another time and can spend more time to discuss about the issue along with our listeners. So, that's all from us. Thank you for tuning in Sunflower FM as your favorite radio, and we'll meet again later. Bye.